Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through how you can install and use Tesseract. Tesseract is a free optical character recognition tool which was originally developed by HP and was later made open source and the development is now sponsored by Google. If you're interested in using Tesseract, please continue watching. Come back. So first, if you want to download the Tesseract to install on your PC, you can go to this URL. And once you go to this URL, uh, click uh, this one or whatever bit is your operating system. Now mine is 64, so I'm going to go ahead and download this one. Now this is version 5, which is an alpha stage. There are previous ones available down here, but I don't see why you would have to use the old ones. Now, once you have finished downloading the executable file, you open that up and launch that. And then it will take you to the setup window. Now, I'm just going to go ahead with English. There is one thing that you have to do if you speak another language or if you want to perform optical character recognition for other languages, you expand the additional language data and then select the language that you want to additionally optically recognize on top of English. And for my case, I'm going to pick Korean. And once you go ahead and install it, my version of Tesseract should be able to optically character recognize Korean as a foreign language as well. So I'm um, just going to close and minimize this. Now to use Tesseract, you can use the command prompt and obviously because AutoHotKey can work with command prompt, you can use AutoHotKey to run Tesseract as well. But let me just quickly show you before going into the AutoHotKey scripting part, I will quickly show how OCR can be done using the command prompt. Now. So we've gone past the installation step. So here is a step that teaches you how you can install additional languages after you have installed Tesseract on your PC. And this is from this website. So just follow the, these steps if you want to install other languages after having installed Tesseract. And here is the part that teaches you how to use Tesseract. So you bring up your command prompt and then um, what you got to do is you've got to basically go to the folder where Tesseract is saved. Program files and Tesseract. And when I change my directory to Tesseract folder, if I type out Tesseract, that means I'm going to run the Tesseract executable uh, which is right here. So I'm going to run that Tesseract executable by providing the Tesseract word and I have to get a screenshot. So let me go ahead and grab a screenshot from this website. So I'm just going to take a screen capture of this area and save it as capture. And if I go back to go back to my site and go back to my command prompt, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run Tesseract and provide a path to the file that I have saved down, which is capture.png, and then the next argument is the output output path and the output path does not require an extension so I'm just going to provide the same path and then call the output file just output the extension is going to be a text file by default so once I'm done with this I can go ahead and press the enter key to run the optical character recognition and you will see the output text file having been created here so let me just uh, open up the captured file, uh, which is this image, and 
this is the result that I've got. So I can see uh, what is lorem ipsum. Okay, oh no, it starts from here obviously, starts from the top. So I've got all these words. Just taking a quick look at it, it looks like the result appears to be fairly accurate. There's always this character at the end. I don't know why, I don't know what that represents, but uh, that's just something that gets uh, produced at the end of the result for the OCR. So that's the basics of how you can use the Tesseract uh, from the command prompt. So let me just uh, go ahead and move on to other things. What else do we have? Okay, so the, the, these are different options as to how you can provide the arguments depending on whether you're in uh, the Tesseract OCR folder or elsewhere. If you're not in the Tesseract OCR folder in the Programs Files folder, then you have to provide the full path to the executable file as well as the image file and the output file. Now, if you want to do a non-English OCR, and this is the then this is the syntax that you have to follow. And in order to perform a non-English OCR, let me just go ahead and say I'm gonna gonna go and search for Korean news. And uh, hopefully there's some Korean here that I can optically character recognize. Nope. Maybe there's a wait so I can change it to there's some Korean here. Oh, that's that's an ad. Um, or maybe I can go to this website. Maybe uh, here we go. So I've got some. Korean text here. Obviously, if you're not a Korean speaker, then you won't be able to understand or even verify the result of the uh, of the of result of the the OCR for Korean text. But I guess you're gonna have to just trust me on this in terms of the accuracy. So capture K O R is the PNG file that I named the uh, image file to as, and what. I have to do is because I'm in the Tesseract OCR folder, I just gotta provide the Tesseract word and then provide the whole path to the image file, which is capture K O R P N G, and then output as the same thing. And let me just delete this and use the same text file name output. And if I hit enter, I will get an output which should have given me. Oh no, sorry, my bad. I should have. I forgot to place the parameter that allows me to allows me to optically character recognize foreign language, which starts with a dash and L. And what follows that is the three letter that represents the foreign language. And in case for Korea, it's K O R. And if you look at the uh, website links that I provided before, then you should be able to find what is the three letter for each of the foreign languages. So um, if I run this again and press enter, well, actually, let me just delete the output file first and then press enter to run it. And the output file gets created again. So here we go. So that's the result. And if I compare the result between the two, between the two, so there are characters that haven't been accurately recognized, but I think more or less it's done a relatively okay job. Let me try another one. See what we get. So I'm just gonna go down and grab, say, this text here, and then save it as Capture Korean. And let me just verify. Yep, that's the image that I've captured just now. And I'm just gonna run it again. And hopefully the result is gonna be slightly better this time. If I open up the image file to compare. Um, that, that, that. Yeah, I think it's pretty accurate this time. So as with all optical character recognition engines, it's a bit of a hit and miss. And uh, I think for English it's pretty accurate, but for foreign languages, it can be a little bit less reliable. But for this case, it's worked fairly okay. Um,
Okay, so, and uh, there's one more thing that I wanted to show, just a quick one. Obviously, there's, you can access the help file in Tesseract. Let's figure out what that is. Okay, Tesseract dash dash help. If you type that out, then there's going to be a help file showing up where you can learn more about what you can do with this OCR engine. There is what's called page segmentation mode, which is um, which can be helpful if you know. And this affects, so what PSM does is it will affect how Tesseract splits the image in lines of text and words. So let me just give you an example of that. We had this other image that is lorem ipsum right so right now the psm mode by default is three the default is three and there is a mode called number six which i'm going to just show you if i went to tesseract dash dash help psm this gives me the list of all the available modes for psm and i'm just gonna take a screen capture of this and save it as PSM. Let me check it out. So that's how it looks. Okay. So when I do a OCR of this PSM file using the default mode, let me go ahead and run that. Tesseract desktop desktop. Oh, got up. So you don't have to use a quotation mark if you your path doesn't have any spaces but if your path does then it's best that you do you do put that in but it's not a must if you don't have any spaces so i'm just going to delete that i think it overrides the existing file if there's a file there already and the okay i provided the the extension i didn't have to and this is the result we get right and if I look at the image file, this is quite different to what we're expecting. So I can see that it uh, managed to recognize this and then page segmentation mode. And then you get you get a whole bunch of uh, lines of weird things that I don't recognize. And then you get the orientation uh, script detection only. So there's, a, there's two line breaks here for whatever reason. Um, and then O has been recognized as a zero. And there's so many additional line breaks that I did not wish to have, obviously. So what let me just give you what the output would look like if I were to use the page segmentation mode of I think it was let me just double check PSM. Uh, where, where is the line for PSM? Here we go. So double dash PSM and six will change my page segmentation mode to a single uniform block of text. And the result should get better. When I open up, as you can see, the result is so much better than before when we had addition, so many additional lines that we didn't want. Although obviously you get uh, characters that are miss recognized like that that's supposed to be zero and it's um, recognized as an uh, at sign and this one also as an at sign um, but largely it's so much better than the default page segmentation mode of number three right but in other circumstances so for example this one this one where you have segmentation of the page between left and right, so you've got columns that separates the page, then I think the the default mode works better. So let me just go ahead and run um let me run that with hang on a sec. Capture PNG. I'm gonna run this OCR for that one and then output Right. I'm just going to delete this and then now I'm going to provide the PSM of six. And what I'm going to get is something that looks like this. <clears throat> it looks very congested. Um, so if I compare it with the image itself, 
it starts from so it's Mr. Lorem Ipsum title I think uh, what is Lorem Ipsum why do we use it okay so what is Lorem Ipsum is here and why do we use it is in another column but it failed to separate them out and this it's just the the result just looks pretty messy so in this case if I use the default mode of three by not specifying the PSM mode. Let me delete this and then run this again. The result that we get is, as you can see, so much better than PSM mode six. So um, what is lorem ipsum? Question marks got converted into a parenthesis, but where does it come from? And why do we use it is down there instead of next to what is lorem ipsum so um so test out different modes and see what works best for you under whatever circumstance that you're in so that's it for the basics of how to use the uh, tesseract and now i'm going to move on to uh how to use tesseract in auto haki and it's basically the same thing let me just move this out of the way so I've got the run command running the tesseract executable file, the path to the image file and the output file are provided. If you want to do a page segmentation mode of six, then you just put that in there. And then the foreign language goes like that. And you can also use the command prompt um, and use variables in, inside your path. And sometimes you don't have to provide the full path if the files are saved in the same directory so the default uh, path would be using the, the path where the script is saved this is you can also use a variable to to store all your command line if you if you decided to use the command prompt to perform the OCR so once you so I'm just gonna show you how you can make use of the result from performing the OCR which is um, let me just open up a test script so I can quickly draft um, using one of these. So I'm just going to do that. And then because my file is in, okay, I'll move the capture file into test script folder and output and remove this PSM6. And then I'm going to use the file read command to read the result now mind you you have you better use the runway command because you want the optical character recognition to be finished before you can read the OCR result if I go ahead and run this script it should perform OCR and it should display the result in a message box like this so in this way um, if you if you want to use auto key script to optically character recognize an image and then feed the result back into your auto key script then this is the way you can do it. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.